Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for being out in the vineyard for me. It looks gorgeous. Good to see you again. It's nice to see you again. Um, just before we start, if at some point you want to show people around, there's a little arrow button. You can go in and out of selfie mode, so it's easier to direct the camera. Yep. Camera. Sure. Okay. So, so um, whenever, whatever's easier. Oh my God! Look at you. That's so gorgeous. It's cloudy though, right? So that's the. These are the very old vines of Merlot we have. Uh, oh wow! I'm now in a parcel called the L'Enclos, which is the very uh -huh. southern part of Saint Emilion. Uh, it's oh, literally wow. by the river, which is behind me. Voila. Oh, man. Okay. Wow. This is the Dodden River. And uh, as soon as uh -huh. you cross the river, you're no longer in the Appalachian. You are in what right. we call the Entre de Mer. <clears throat> okay. Oh, and right. Behind there. me, okay. this way oh, right is the village of Saint Emilion, which is six kilometers away from here. That's fantastic. Okay. We're going to do that again. Here's a very old from, uh, DNS just head out here. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Voila. Um, it's about 90 years old. So I'm going to ask... Red Merlot. 90? Wow. Yep. So I'm going to ask robust. you to do that a few times because people get on and off and they will pop in and out. So we'll, sure. we'll look around later too. Um, but will you start by introducing yourself and tell us your history about how you got into the wine world? Oh, it's a long story. Originally, I'm from Paris. And um, I got married to... Uh, a winemaker who uh, did Enology in Dijon. And uh, she did most of her work uh, in a famous chateau in Pomerol, which is called Chateau Petrus. Uh, and she was the assistant of the, the winemaker, Jean-Claude Berouet, for many years, oh, wow. since 95. And when we finished our studies, we were both, both looking for a job. And we decided to move to Bordeaux because she had her own connections in Bordeaux with the Moex family at Petrus. So she managed to find a work as a, as a winemaker for many chateaux uh, that okay. are sold by the Moex family. Right. Uh, much later on, about 10 years, uh, in 2005, we had the opportunity to, uh, uh, we're looking for a, a domain for many years, but we were not really uh, from Bordeaux, so it's very difficult. Yeah. We had no particular connections, no money at all. Uh, so that made it very difficult to find a domain. Luckily, uh, uh, the ex-owner of Chateau vieux Taifer was an old man with no inheritance. Mm -hmm. And he decided to, he wanted to sell the property uh, to someone who was a complete novelty uh, in Saint-Emilion. Because he didn't want to sell to any of the neighbors uh, <laughs> that had been chasing him for many, many, many years to sell the domain. So he knew uh, Catherine, my wife, who's a winemaker, uh, because she was not famous, but she was well known at Domaine uh, uh, Petrus. And he said, okay, I don't know you guys. Uh, I know how you uh, manage to uh, work in the vineyards. I know what you can probably do and the potential. Uh, so I'd be happy to sell my property to you guys. The wow. thing is that we had no money at all. Uh, so of course we wanted to buy the property, but we had no money. At the time it was... It was before the subprimes, it was be before the, the big crisis. The other crisis, not this one, the one before. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was very difficult to, to, to get some money from the bank. But um, I'm in the industry, I've been in the industry for more than 20 years as a distributor. Uh, and uh, so the banks thought, okay, we have a woman here who's been working at Petrus, and we have a guy who sells some wine from a very high-end domain, so I'm sure they can manage to, um, to sell their own wine. Uh, so they did finance the property when we bought it in 2005. So first finish was 2006. Okay. So that's where we started. So that's where we started with a <clears throat> very small domain, which is uh, a bit less than five hectares altogether. 99% okay. of what we produce is red. Uh, we have a very different approach than what people usually do in uh, Bordeaux because we do two separate wines. But uh, generally speaking, in Bordeaux, you have the main wine and then you have a second wine. We do two different mm. wines that are mostly uh, driven by the terroir. So uh, we have a Burgundy approach, which is we have a wine, which is what we call our village wine, which is a blend of five different parcels, but only Merlot, 100% Merlot, red. Okay. Then we have a single vineyard, which is six kilometers away from here on the, the highest uh, spot in Saint-Emilion, where we produce the Chateau Vieux Taifer, 
very old vines of uh, okay. Cabernet. And then we have a tiny, tiny, tiny production that you know, uh, the white wine, which is a vin de table, uh, called the Blanc du Chateau du Taifer, which is a blend of mainly Merlot Blanc uh, by 70%. And then you have some Sauvignon Blanc, Sémillon, some Chasselas, uh, some Muscadelle, and even some Sauvignon Gris. So it's a tiny parcel. Oh. And we only produce between 2,000 and 3,000 bottles every year, depending on the vintage. Oh, I feel very lucky then. That's, 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 that's how I met you or got interested in your wine. And it took me a while to make room on my list for your red, but your red just is stunning too. Um, so can you just Thank briefly you tell the history of the estate and how, how about the estate in general, just how it fits into San Emilio before you? So before us, this domain was mainly sold to the, uh, it was sold bulk to the trade. Okay. So the man who was uh, the ex-owner of this property, uh, he was making a, a decent wine, uh, but wasn't in, too interested in working on the terroir. He was interested in producing uh, massively uh, some Merlot and to sell it bulk to the trade. So he had no approach okay. of uh, the market, couldn't speak any foreign language, and it went all to the Muex at the time. Uh, as bulk, oh, okay. uh, so he had a complete different approach. The good news I is see. he was not necessarily a good winemaker, but uh, he was a very good uh, worker in the vineyard. So the quality of what we oh. have in terms of, uh, of uh, the quality of the, 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 the plant is beautiful. From start, from scratch, it was very good. He wasn't organic, yeah. so we became organic progressively. Uh, <clears throat> it took five years. And we had to rethink everything. It was a complete different approach. So for us, we only had the vineyard, the potential, but we started everything from scratch, from the label, the work in the vineyard, everything. Even the, even the, the winemaking was totally a diff uh, different. So we cut the yields in about by two uh, to make it. Uh, closer to. Um, uh, 45 hectolitres per hectare, depending on the vintage. Oh, okay, wow. And the name, was that created with by you or was it the Chateau? No, 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 the name was Chateau Vieux Taifère because uh, Vieux Taifère is actually a location. The place where we, where oh. we are is called Taifère. Uh, so we believe Taifère meaning uh, mending the metal. Uh, so we believe sure. that at the time, because where we live by the river, very south in the, the Appalachian, was a location where people, all the producers from Saint Emilio and Pomol, were bringing their barrels down to the village of Vignonet, where I live, where the property is. And you had the boats called the Gabar at the time uh, that were taking all the barrels, shipping the barrels into uh, Libourne. Mm -hmm. From Libourne, it was going to the Négociant. And from the Négociant in Libourne, it was going on a bigger boat to Holland, Bristol in the UK to other traders to make their own bottling. So the reason why it's called Taifair is I believe because all the, 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 the boats were tracked by horses. Okay. So we believe that the people that were here were mending the metal to make the shoe horse uh, uh. for the horses to track the boats into Libor. Okay. Which takes wow. about a day or two. Yeah. It's, cool. it's all traffic by trucks and trains and, and cars. But at the time, it went through on the Gabar to Libourne, and then from Libourne to the big names of, uh, of the trade in um, Belgium and the UK mainly. Wow. And even Holland. So, that's, that's fascinating. I got to say, that's really uh, some hands-on history. I like that. Um, since this, the white production is so small, can you describe what Merlot Blanc is? Many people don't even know that it exists. Uh, how your Chasselas fits in the picture, why you can't call it Bordeaux, and the bottle that you chose. So, so uh, <laughs> actually, actually, when we, when we, uh, so when we bought the property, there was no white. Uh -huh. But then we met another old man with no inheritance, who had a very small spot uh, <sighs> in the, the village of saint christophe des bars And we okay. bought a big parcel of red, a nice parcel. Well, it's not a big parcel, it's only one hectare. Uh, not even that. It's a little bit less than one hectare. And that's why we produced the Chateau du Taifère red. 
Okay. And this man, again, had no inheritance. So we were really lucky uh, because it's the nicest and the most expensive part of saint and It's very difficult to have access. <clears throat> so he said to us, we got introduced to this old man uh, from a friend of ours. And he said, I want to sell my property because I'm, uh, I'm now 84. I have no inheritance and I want, the, I want to sell this parcel. The, I don't want to sell it, again, same story. I don't want to sell it to any of my neighbors. Um, and I want to sell it to you because I've tried your red wine and I find it very good. And I can see, because I saw your vineyard, that you can take care of my vineyard if you buy it. So I'd be really interested to uh, sell it to you guys. So that's what we did. And he said, there's another condition. Uh, I have a small parcel, which is close to the one I'm selling to you. And I want to keep this parcel for another two years. Um, and to produce my own wine for my own consumption. So we, can, we said, okay, it's fine, but you're 85 years old or 84 years old. If you don't mind, he wasn't organic. We wanted to do it organic. Uh, she said, I, I will sell it to you, but in the meantime, I want to do my, produce my own wine. So we said, okay, that, that's fine. But if you don't mind, we we'll, would like to do the work in the vineyard. So you have nothing to do. All you have to do is pick yeah. when it's ready to be picked. So we did all the work in the vineyard on this small parcel, which is really tiny. Uh, it's a third of a hectare. It's nothing. And, um, and we never... <laughs> was white grape varieties, which is impossible. 99.99% of all the, 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 the grapes that are planted in saint emilion are red. It's Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon, and sometimes uh -huh. a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, and maybe Petit Verdot, but that's it. Right. Uh, and maybe a little bit tiny amounts of, of Malbec, but that would be it. So we had no clue that it was white. So uh, in 2011, we were somewhere in the Alps from the, for the vacations uh, with a family and uh, the old man called us and he said, okay, I just saw my doctor. Uh, I'm not gonna live long, but I'm not allowed to drink wine anymore. So I'm not gonna do the harvest in 2011. It was early September. So there okay. was no way we we're gonna harvest. He, he just said, I just went into the dough. You need to come back so we can sign the papers and you can buy this small parcel. So we said, okay, but no rush. We're only gonna start uh, harvesting uh, in 2011. It was late, late harvest. So probably end of September, beginning of October. So we said, no rush. He said, no, 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 you should hurry up because I've tasted the, the, the grape in the, in, the, in the vineyard and it's almost mature. I said, what are you talking about with 2011? It's not even mature, even close to mature. And of course we didn't know because we did the work in the field, but we never saw the grape itself. We stopped the uh -huh. work when it was still green. We never saw right. the fruit. Uh -huh. We never realized that it was white and we had no clue and no idea. Uh, and he was losing his head. So we thought it was a joke. And he said, no, I've tasted the Sauvignon and the Sauvignon is mature. And I said, come on, Cabernet Sauvignon, it cannot be uh, mature. He said, no, Sauvignon Blanc. I said, what are you talking about? We're in saint -Emilion. He said, no, it's all, this parcel is all white. I said, okay, so what, <laughs> what, is, what is in the parcel? He said, well, I have a lot of Merlot, it's mainly Merlot. So I said, there you go. So it's mainly red then. He said, no, no, it's Merlot Blanc. So I thought he was losing his head because I never heard of Merlot Blanc in my uh -huh. life. So what happened is that we, of course, were in total panic. And we called <laughs> one of our friends, uh, who's a famous producer in uh, Champagne, called Anselm Selos from Jacques Selos. Yeah. And, wow. uh, and his son did his uh, uh, training with us in 2011. Uh, as, uh, as he was my wife's trainee for, uh, for the, the vinification in 2011. Wow. So I called him and I said, listen, you won't believe what I'm gonna tell you. We have some white wines, uh, grape in our uh, a new parcel that we're gonna buy. And he said, okay, so, uh, so we, have, we, we haven't done any winemaking of the white for a long time. So we need your help. What, what do we have to do? He said, what do you have? I said, we have Merlot Blanc. He said, no, it, never, it doesn't even exist. I said, yes. So we <laughs> looked into the history of, of uh, saint emilion and we realized that in the history of saint emilion more than 70%, uh, more than 100 years ago, was white on the right bank in Bordeaux. Yeah, they say that. I didn't realize, you don't think about it going into saint emilion No, but, of wow. course not. And everything uh, uh, at the time, uh, there was the classification done by the Brits uh, on the left bank. And here it was always the farmers. Uh, they had a lot of complex compared to the people from the left bank with the beautiful chateau and the nobles and all these beautiful families. 
uh, very rich, wealthy, and selling their wines very easily. And they were producing red. But here on the right bank, it was all white, or mainly white. So because all the people that produce here saw that it was uh, getting successful to produce some red wines on the left bank, they removed the whites. Okay. They left it for the entre deux mer but on the right bank, they started planting some Merlot and uh, some Cabernet Franc uh, and a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon. And, and that's the history of the right bank. So originally, it was white. So we're now we're the owners of the only parcel left of Merlot Blanc. Wow. Uh, and that's the reason, because you asked me the question, why are we in Bordeaux or not even in Bordeaux anymore? Because they now consider that Merlot Blanc uh, is uh, a great variety that belongs to history. Okay. And I believe that, uh, okay, it belongs to history, maybe, but the, the quality of the terroir we have is yeah. totally adapted for the production of great whites. It is exactly what you can find in Avis in Champagne, which was called oh. the Calcaire Asteri, it's limestone. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's absolutely beautiful for the, for, for the whites. So we kept the whites. They wanted us to remove it. And of course, we wanted to keep it. So we did the first uh, vinification in 2011, pressed everything together, mature or nearly mature. Uh, everything, all the vinification is done in, uh, in wood, new wood, but long barrels, cigar-shaped barrels, 300 liters. Oh, right. mm -hmm. uh, so we, lead, we, we want the, the leaves to be in contact with the juice for a long time. Okay. Uh, and we don't remove, we don't do any racking or remove the wine uh, in the barrel. We leave it out as it is, and the fermentation starts inside the barrel. Wow, okay. And that was Anselm Celos who said, this is the way you should do things, very easily. Just press everything together with the stems, all the different grapes variety together because it's a small parcel, so you're not going to start separating everything. It's too small. Just press everything. Once you have the juice, uh, you do a little bit of cooling, and then you put everything in the barrel. And wow. you wait for the fermentation to start. So there's no um, technology in the winemaking at all. All we do is press. It's all organic. We just press everything all together, put the juice in the barrel, and wait for the fermentation to start. And that's it. And that's it. Do you use, do you use new barrels every time? Yes, new barrels. But the, 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 um, the toast is, is more than light. We've developed a technique with our cooper of, uh, of um, a toast. It's a six-hour flame toast. So it's very long, but it's a tiny flame. The inside of the barrel is the same color as the outside of the barrel. So it's dry. Oh, okay. it is, it's just a smoky kind of uh, definition to the wine, but it doesn't bring anything else. Uh, um, nothing else to, to the wine. Wow. Um, I just want to interrupt one second. Uh, Dionysi says hi. Ray Hello, Dionysi. <laughs> Is Rachel there uh, too? Angela, Hello. What? Hello, everyone. And uh, Angela, yeah, they do sell. Dionysi uh, just said, yes, they import the whites to uh, DNS, does it? Yeah, and actually, I have DNS a has industry. half of the production of the whites. Awesome. Yeah, so and they, they are a bit more than 1,000 bottles every year. 1,000? Okay. They're amaz amazing. Um, so, can you, uh, is that what's called vinification, vinification integral? Yes. What you, when you ferment in the barrel? And is that rare that you do that, or many people do it? No, 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 no. Nobody does it. Actually, nobody uses okay. uh, Merlot Blanc uh, in right. Bordeaux anymore. Right. Uh, but the technique but, uh, of the wine fermenting the technique in barrel. Is, 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 uh, is Vendange Integral, all done by hand, pressed. I see Rachel there. Hello, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um, and we just press, uh, do a little bit of cooling uh, for about 24 hours, and then remove all the juice into the barrel. Great. Gotcha. Um, and then why did you choose the bottle shape? So the story is, uh, we got issues with the, uh, uh, the bureaucracy, the French bureaucracy, the famous French bureaucracy, which is always a nightmare. Uh, it was a big struggle. Um, they wanted us to remove the whites to start with, and we weren't happy at all with that. Uh, so we said no. Uh, we said, listen, we look into the books, and we belong to the history of Saint-Emilion. So we're not asking for the Appalachian saint Emilion because we understand it's all right, red now, but uh, we, we can exist as a wine from saint Emilion being a white. It was getting really uh, complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't want us to be part of the Appalachian and not even in Bordeaux. So the first uh, production was a bottle shape 
like a Bordeaux white mm-hmm. in 2011. And uh, in 2012, we decided to uh, just move out of the Appalachian okay. because they didn't want us in the Appalachian. So they said, yeah. because they didn't recognize us being part of Bordeaux, we said, mm-hmm. we're not going to use a Bordeaux shape bottle of, of uh, Bordeaux. And because we love the wines from the Jura, we decided we would take a bottle that looks like the Clavelin shape bottle from, uh, from the Jura. Uh, What's the, the name of the bottle shape? It's called the Clavelin. The Clavelin is actually Clavelin. 72 centiliters instead oh, of 75. Okay. Uh, so it's the bottle shape that you find with the Vin Jaune from the Jura. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's the one we wanted to take. We're not allowed to use it because it's protected as Vin Jaune. But our bottle actually comes from, uh, um, because we're looking into the internet to find a, a, a bottle that we liked. And we yes. wanted something close to the Jura, but we couldn't use the Jura. So we found a producer in, uh, in Italy, in Sicily, who was producing some uh, olive oil. And I oh. called the man and I said, I saw your bottle on the internet, I really like it. Where do you buy it from? He said, it's my bottle and I have a monopoly on this shape. It's for my very high-end production of olive oil. So I said, listen, we're not in competition. You produce olive oil, I produce wine. Right. So maybe we can use this as a bottle. He said, I buy the 100% of the production. So he said, I only produce 2,000, 3,000 bottles of my whites. Would you mind if I used it? So we buy it from this man every year. That's and, awesome. Uh, and he actually ships to us a case of olive oil, and we shape a case of, uh, <laughs> uh, of wine so we can, use, uh, awesome. we can use the shape bottle. That's fantastic. Uh, so it was very difficult to rack it then in a, in a case, in wooden case, because there was no – so we had to adapt it. Uh, yeah. We use a long cork and wax. So it's very similar to what you find in, um, in, um, in the Jura. It looks like a vin jaune from the outside. Yeah. But it's actually, um, I do want to talk about your red wine, but I just I have to gush over your whites just a little bit because whenever I sell it to a table, they're open to it because they're looking for something like a full body, but Sauvignon Blanc, whatever, and they just love it. And now people come back and they go, we want that wine that has a funny shaped bottle. And it's it, everybody always gets a second bottle, which is the highest compliment. Um, so I want to talk about the reds a little bit, but on the transition to that, you do your labels are very unique also, aren't they? Yes. Uh, we are using uh, uh, a very old printer from Paris called the Stern family. Uh, these are the people who uh, print uh, all the famous uh, diplomas you can get in high schools. And uh, if you are a, a minister of something or you get the Légion d'honneur, which is a high reward that you get in France. Um, and this woman we met, uh, it's a beautiful place in Paris. Uh, in the Passage des Panorama, uh, in the second arrondissement. It's an absolutely beautiful place. And it has a very old printing system. And we met this woman because uh, she did all the, um, uh, you know, the announcements when you have children that, uh, uh, so they had a beautiful oh, yeah. uh, label. Uh, mm-hmm. So we asked her to design the label for us. Okay. Uh, so she did the design. But we wanted, the, 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 fun, the thing about Bordeaux is that you cannot go really funky about the labels. It has to be very classic. So yeah. we're using a very classic label. It has four angels on it. It's actually the four kids we have. Oh, uh, uh, and, uh, and that's it. It's a very, very classic label. Awesome. All right. So let, uh, tell me about your reds. What's uh, everything I should know about your red? So uh, the reds, uh, so as I told you, we have a very different approach from what is done in Bordeaux. Uh, Bordeaux is always about blends. Mm-hmm. Uh, so on the right bank, people use mainly Merlot. And then they use a little bit of Cabernet Franc and maybe some Cabernet Sauvignon and tiny amounts of the other two grapes that you can use, or three grapes that you can use. Uh, we decided that we would do it the Burgundy way, which is uh, uh, Merlot belongs to the right bank. So we're only going to use Merlot. And because we have a Burgundy approach, uh, our approach is not about blending or the finding in, in, uh, in barrels. It's about the terroir. So we wanted to have, and luckily when we bought this property, we have four different parcels who are located in the four different areas where you can produce uh, saint Emilion. So they all have different identities. So 90% or maybe 95% of the production is a wine called the Pavillon de Taillefer. And the Pavillon de Taillefer is not a second wine like you would find in Bordeaux. We're not allowed mm-hmm. to call it Chateau. You can only name one wine Chateau. Uh, so the Pavillon de Taillefer is more than 90% of the production. It's a blend of four different Merlots born in four different areas of, uh, okay. of Saint-Emilion. So one is in Saint-Emilion, the other one is Saint-Emilion, uh, Saint-Emilion, uh, Saint-Emilion, uh, Saint-Emilion, uh, Saint-Emilion, uh, Saint-Emilion, u
Saint-Sulpice de saint laurent saint laurent des combes and Saint-Emilion. And then we have a, a single vineyard called the Chateau vieux uh that cannot really be blended with the other red, the other red, the Padillon. It's called the Chateau vieux And this is very old vines of Merlot on the, the limestone area of uh, saint christophe des barbes a beautiful parcel. So these are the two reds. But the main production, the, the classic cuvee, as you would say in Chateau du Pape, uh, or the village wine, as you would say in Burgundy, is our Pavillon de Taillefer. Okay. That is the wine. Uh, and that's what DNS has as the, uh, uh, <coughs> the, um, as the main wine of the, uh, right. of the, of the, the domain. Yeah, it's a stunner too. So, so um, no blend, just Merlot. Right. Four different areas of production. And that's the definition. So it's our definition of what a Merlot is on the right bank in Bordeaux. Voilà. Right. That's the whole idea. It's, it's just stunning. It's one of my favorites on the list to um, talk to people about. Um, I'm getting close to the half hour mark, so I don't want to take too much more of your time. But someone asked if you're back to the white, if they're grafted and is Chassala allowed in Bordeaux? But I think you already covered that, but maybe just touch it again. And maybe show us again where you are while you're talking, if you could. Sure. So these, so we're, right now I'm in the parcel where we produce the, the pavillon, so the main uh, okay. wine from the property. These are the very old vines of Merlot. You see it's very wet. It's been raining for about, uh, about 10 days. Now. Okay. Uh, this period right now is called the Saint de Glace. I don't know what the name is in English, but as per, I presume it's called the, the, the Saints of Ice. Okay. <laughs> so it's the period where uh, once uh, this period is gone, which is tomorrow, there is no risk of frost anymore. Oh, awesome. Okay. So it's been really literally pissing with rain for the last 10 days. Heavily. It's very wet. There's no way I can even walk because it's all wet. Wow. Like a, a rice, plant, rice plantation. <laughs> uh, so that's the very southern part of the Appalachian, and behind me, you see wow, is right there is the river, it's the Don Don River. Voila. So if you wow. cross the river, you're in the Appalachian. You're no longer in Saint Emilion. You are in uh, what we call the Entre Deux Mers. It's crazy how close you are to the river. That's wild to me. Yeah, it is. Literally, the, so the house of the property is also very close to the river. Wow. Um, and then do, can you just to the, for that question about, I think Chasselas is not allowed, but will you So it's the... not allowed if you're in Bordeaux Appalachian. Right. But we're in, uh, we decided to, to get out of the Appalachian. So our wine is a vin de table. We can use Syrah. We can use whatever we want. We have total freedom. Once we're no, we don't have to deal with the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the paperwork and all the, uh, the yeah. customs or anything. We can do whatever we want. So it's a vin de yeah. table. What happened actually is that, uh, as you know, we're only an hour away driving from the sea. And most uh -huh. people in saint Emilion, not me, but many, uh, they have a house by the, by, the, by the sea. So the reason why the old man, the ex-owner of this property, had some white and decided to keep the Merlot Blanc is because he, was, he had a house by the sea and he was bringing by some, some, uh, some fish, mm -hmm. some oysters <laughs> and everything you can find in the sea. So he said, I want my own consumption of white wine <laughs> to go with the fish. And the Chesla is the, the actual grape he was eating and not uh, using oh, as right. winemaking. So it goes by two, three percent in the blend. But we, we just decided to press everything together, including the Chesla that he was eating at the time, not drinking, Such eating. a cool story. That is very <laughs> funny. Um, well, we talked, I, I hate to talk so much about your white wine that many people can't find, but it's such a good story and it really, it really opened my eyes. And I, I've learned so much from you and hearing it again today was really great. If people are interested, DNEC is on here, DNEC Graventus, DNS is your importer into the States. And um, you're around, I, I, um, Aaron Pick said hi to you. I didn't realize you know him. I was in, I was talking to him last week from Sora Vineyards. Yes. And then um, Loic Pasquet and Jean-Baptiste Duquesne are also planting some crazy old grapes. So it's kind of a, a theme on here lately. Um, Philip, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. It's really good Thank to you see very you much. again. And uh, I hope we'll see each other on your side or on my side sooner rather than later. Soon, the, the, well, the sooner the better. Uh, right now it's <laughs> exactly. a little bit difficult. We have bad weather. We just done the bottling of the white 2019 now. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, so GNS is gonna collect very soon. Uh, okay. It's planned. Uh, so they have, uh, 
the big part of the production, which is the good news for the U.S. Uh, uh -huh. uh, and the rest will go wherever it can go because uh, France is a little bit complicated right now, especially yeah. with restaurants. And uh, uh, but the 2019, uh, we had it last night, and it's really really nice. Of course, it's a very awesome. good vintage. Uh, but 2019 is absolutely beautiful. And for the first oh, time, we're it. producing Magnums. For the first oh, time, that's, only, yeah, that's, it's only hmm, 60 Magnums. Okay. And I think DNS has 48 man Magnums out of 60. Uh, wow. Uh, so we did some Magnums because we had a few customers asking for the Magnum. That sounds cool. The bottle must be gorgeous. Um, really quickly, what's happening in the vines right now? Uh, it's been a nightmare. Uh, we've had the rain. We had a little bit of hail. We had a little bit of frost. Oh, right. Now we have the rain and we're organic. So we have to go into the fields every two days now. Uh, wow. Because and we have to do it by the horse, all the work and all the, uh, uh, because we don't use any chemistry. So uh, it's, uh, once it starts raining, it removes all the product, which is on the vine. So we have right. to go there every two days. Uh, wow. But now the good news is that we've only been affected by the hail and the, um, and the frost by 10%. Okay. Some of our neighbors lost everything literally oh, really? everything uh, so on top of the uh the virus they just lost everything so it's going to be very difficult for many producers here we're only f affected by maybe 15 10 to 15 percent at the most uh -huh. so right now it's looking good uh there's a lot of pressure because the disease is coming the mildew yeah. i don't know if it's the same word in english i believe it is yeah. mildew yeah so uh -huh. the mildew is showing up so it's uh, we need to be very cautious but luckily by tomorrow no clouds, beautiful weather, onwards for about a month. Uh, awesome. Because the sun of glass is over, so now we're, we're back in business. We're back in business. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Well, I'll let you go. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you it was for a real taking pleasure. the time Thank out you very much. to show us the vineyards. This is great. And uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. See you soon. Bye-bye, Jeff. Take care. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Au revoir.